Today, we enter day three of the ANC National Conference taking place at Nazareth Expo Center in Johannesburg. My name is Norman Masungwini, a political journalist for City Press. So far, we have seen the nominations. We have seen how different factions, camps, and delegates are doing their horse trading, how they are moving around, trying to convince and persuade other delegates, other provinces to be on their slate. It will be interesting. We know that they are going back to cast the most important votes. And we have seen um, the conference adopting the second DSG position, which now it will no longer be known as the top six. It's going to be known as the top seven. Since the announcement of the nomination list, we have seen different factions going into the background. They've been the sideshows of trying to convince each other. Things are happening. Um, ten minutes is a long time now for, for people to be sure of where they are going, what's going to happen. But the most important thing that um, we have seen is that this conference is going to be a close contest, especially for uh, the top four, if I might call it like that. I'm saying the top four because the presidential candidates. Initially, the, 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 the gap between President Cyril Ramaphosa, the incumbent, and uh, the challenger, which is former health minister Dr. Swelim Kize, was very wide uh, in terms of branches. You are, we're looking at uh, 2000, over 2,000 votes for the ANC president, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, and Swelim Kize at 960. That gap uh, or that number has changed because now other people who were vying for the position have now declined or couldn't make it, couldn't make the cut. Now we are left with two uh, horse race. And even the nomination from the floor for, the, uh, for that position hasn't uh, gotten anywhere. It's now uh, left with two candidates. And now things are happening. When you look at Nkosa Zana Damini Zuma, Lindy Wesisulu, who did not make it, now it's the, those who were supporting them. There was a host trading, which is now part of the, the, the big game that is happening now, the host trading, because most of those people who were supporting Lindy Wesisulu and Dr. Nkosa Zana Damini Zuma, those votes are split now to President Sir Ramaphosa and Dr. Zuelim Kize, but it is very close. It's a very close contest. When we move to the next position of the deputy, also it, is, it was clear that Paul Mashatile was in the lead, but now things have changed. Branches, PEC, the pronouncement that happened last night, this morning, things have changed. Now it's a close contest. If you look at uh, that position, you have uh, Paul Mashatile. Well, you've got the, uh, Oscar Mabuyane. And, and, and Ronald Lamola. Now, the two provinces, we are told that the two provinces, which is the Eastern Cape and, uh, and Pumalanga, were trying to find each other on who was willing to decline nomination in favor of another one. It, they didn't find each other, which made it difficult for delegates now because they are, they, they, their numbers are split, leaving Paul Mashatile in a pole position to get this, this one. So we'll see what happens because um, the sideshows have not stopped. People are still moving. People are, they, they are still a lot that's happening. People didn't sleep even though the nominations ended very, very late or early this morning. So people continue to, even now there are so many caucuses that are happening. Delegates even in a dining hall, people are still caucusing. So there's still a lot of lobbying that is happening. That we also expect a very close contest. And then on the position of um, your secret Secretary General also, you have um, three people who are uh, vying for that also. They are still trying to persuade each other. The province are also uh, working very hard to have uh, their favorite candidates uh, uh, taking this one. So that one of secretary, you have um, uh, 
you've got um, Dumiseni Ntuli. We, we now we understand that Mpumalanga, which was his strong base, we are told that they've told him that they are no longer going to back him. So we'll just see whether that will give him the numbers and the, 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 the permutation of that, that if Mpumalanga doesn't give him the numbers that they have, well, where is he going to get the numbers? Because Mpumalanga, Limpopo, Free State, Eastern Cape were the province that um, uh, nominated him, that gave him the advantage, the numbers, because his province, uh, KZN, endorsed Pumulo Masuele to be the, uh, the, 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 the person that they wanted him to take the position. And then, and other than that, you've got uh, Fikile Mbalula, then, which is interesting, because the people believe that Mbalula has got the numbers. So it's all about horse trading, who is willing to give who what. And then the other position of Deputy Secretary General, you've got now, because of the adoption of the two DSGs, you've got Nomvula Mkonyane, who, after the two were split, uh, Nomvula emerged to be the strongest and the only candidate until because for Bepot Hitters declined nomination and because those there, there was two there, there are two positions there. Then for Bepot Hitters declined nomination, then Nomvula it took a very long time to have um, a person to contest there until Tina Jomad Peterson uh, accepted nomination and she surprisingly she got she qualified by uh, receiving uh, the highest numbers to say she, she got the she met the threshold so now it will be two people on the first dpt dsg which is nomvula mkonyani and tina jomat peterson so the second uh, position which is dpt dsg uh, you've got uh, also people who were nominated from the floor uh, since this position is new so those that's where we are going to see uh, in terms of the support in the provinces who is going to get what so the treasury the treasury general the most surprising uh, candidates here is the nomination of gwen ramukopa gwen enters this we know that gwen has been linked or associated or oh, she is in the slate of uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa scam. So that also makes it interesting because if that uh, she is on that slate and if you look at Bejan it looks like he was a lone soldier or in other way an independent person to be contesting uh, without a slate. So how is he going to deal with it? We don't know but we'll see the horse trading and the last position of the chairperson. The chairperson, initially the branches were clear. Uh, it was uh, Stanley Matabate who was uh, way ahead of other people. Uh, Gwen, uh, I mean, uh, Gwede Mantashe is the incumbent and his name is now coming strong. Uh, this because other provinces who supported Matabate, there's now division, especially in Limpopo. The dynamics have changed because of horse trading. Limpopo have decided now, after what happened last night, when the chairperson or the deputy chairperson, Flores Razilani, uh, marshaled the province to um, to, to, to support the, 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 the Dr. William Kize. Uh, as the presidential candidate, but the branches defied and disobeyed their call and de decided to stick with, the pre with President Ramaphosa as their person. Now, Sten Matabate, Limpopo has turned its back on Sten Matabate. Not entirely, but majority of people are punishing him for that. So while Matabate is still sticking with KZN because he, he needs the numbers. KZN is number one, is the biggest voting block. So, but then we'll see how that will turn out in terms of who is going to do the perfect horse trading for their candidate to win. In terms of the dynamics, anything is going to change. Uh, change in a way that uh, the movement is still happening, the horse trading, 
um, the leadership will see who gets what.